So, you or someone you know have been diagnosed with cancer. And in my case, uh, throat cancer of the vocal cords. So, this little vlog is, is really concerned with head and neck cancer and some of the treatment options. My brief story, which I'll get into more deta details later, is I had a tumour in my left vocal cord removed about six months ago, and uh, that all went well. Subsequently, moving back to Australia, getting to the medical system, COVID-19 disrupted me getting to see anyone for a while, and when I did, they discovered a polyp, and the position of the polyp in an additional biopsy made it obvious that surgery was no longer an option and I had to have radiation therapy. So I'm about to start radiation therapy. So this is really about, about that. When you get diagnosed with this insidious disease, you, your head just goes into a spin. My body actually went numb. I couldn't think. Uh, a lot of emotions go through you, as, as you'll probably experience. And for me, the worst part of it all is the waiting. You have to wait between appointments, often for weeks. And in that time, there's just so much uncertainty. You don't know if you're going to live or die. You can't plan for your future. Um, like I've been applying for jobs and, and part of me is like, what's the point? I may not even be able to speak after all this. Can't plan for uh, having a future with, it, with another person because I'm single, and it's like, well, how can I even begin to to uh, be with someone going through this process with the uncertainty of, am I going to live or die? So it's a, it's a nightmare of emotions and feelings and thoughts that it's really hard to convey to somebody else. Uh, there's just so many things, and you get so in your head. And for the last few months, I've actually been reeling in my own mental stress occasionally I have good days and I think it's going to be okay I'm going to survive this and, and other days you just think what's the point of getting out of bed so that's that's been my experience um, to get where I am now just about to have radiation therapy this is what will happen to you you'll you'll um, be diagnosed you'll be given a, a, a CT scan and that'll be followed by a PET scan. And the PET scan is when they inject you with radioactive uh, material, uh, which you have to kind of let sit in your body for about an hour. And then you're given the scan. And what, what the scan does, it's kind of like infrared, but not. It highlights where there's activity in your body, where the, the cancer cells apparently really like that, that isotope. And uh, they'll, they'll get really active. So it shows up where your cancer is. Uh, in relation to the CT scan. CT scan's just a sort of a lining up thing. like It's like a template to line up the PET scan and, and the uh, your skeleton. So mine came back where I had, thankfully, I, uh, well, it's poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma, and it was found in a couple of spots in my vocal cord. Um, if you look at, if you imagine this is your vocal cord, in the bottom of the V there is where my... Uh, biopsy revealed some poorly differentiated cells which means clusters of little cancer cells not so much as tumor and because of the situation of where it is radiation therapy was the only option because to have surgery would be to make those uh, vocal cords not work anymore pretty much so I had PET scan and then you wait another couple of weeks you go back and you get a, a, a face mask made which covers from the sort of the, the bottom of your shoulders and your whole head and neck. And they, they mold a bit of white plastic around your face and lock you down so you can't move. And the point of that is every time you have radiation uh, therapy, you're in the same position. And so the, the, uh, the radiation gun, I'll call it, can do its job um, and be more accurate. So that process took about half an hour, wasn't too bad. Um, and then you wait another couple of weeks and, and um, for your first appointment to have the radiation therapy, which I'm going to do very soon, probably uh, tomorrow. So uh, just another thing I want to say, I have been taking curcumin, which is the extract of turmeric, in high doses, uh, 2,400 milligrams, 
per day through tablet form because I'm I've read a bit of research that for breast cancer it's helped with inflammation and it's lowered the impact on the skin of the radiation so I've been taking that we're talking to the doctors consulting with them about that further um, because you don't want to be putting anything in your body that's going to help the cancer cells kind of survive the radiation so that's one of my concerns so I've been going through a lot of the drama in my own head um, and it's really only the last few days I've been able to sort of find some semblance of grounding and that's just through getting out of my head, going down to the beach and just listening to the waves, doing some qigong, um, breathing. Getting back into my breath gets me out of my head. So uh, yeah, that's going to be my journey for the next, I've got 28 sessions five days a week for the next five and a half, six weeks. And uh, after that, I guess I'll know where I'm standing, whether or not this cancer is going to be destroyed or whether or not it's going to uh, come back and cause me to go through further treatment. That's the worst part about all this. You just don't know what's going to happen to you. It's just so up in the air. Anything could happen. And, and it just makes it so difficult to like plan your life. And I love planning my life. And I, I kind of can't. So I'm living in this kind of limbo land where I can't move forward. And uh, that's for me, that's the worst part. Uh, and also the fear of, am I going to just end up in years of cancer treatment and then die a horrible death? I guess that's the biggest fear. Um, you know, I can handle death. I just couldn't handle the prolonged journey to the end of it. So that's me. Uh, I'll keep you posted as I go through the radiation treatment and if you're going through it yourself, good luck.